Hello, my name is Rick Deering, customer service rep for Borgo Industries. Today we'll be performing a pre-season operational test for a 6000 series air seater coupled up with an X30 monitor. This test is very important to do to ensure that your tank works as it was ordered, as it is configured and uh, should be done before or on the first day of seating. We will start with powering up the X30. When we do this, it's going to power up the head and then it's going to search for the bridge in the cab as well as the ECUs on the tank. On the bridge, you'll notice a blue flashing light. While that light is flashing, that indicates that the X30 is searching for that bridge. Once it finds the bridge, you'll notice on the screen, you'll get a green indicator indicating that it's configuring the ECU and synchronizing to that ECU. If at any time you get a warn, uh, orange warning, that would indicate that your connection between your bridge and your X30 is not working. This may take up to 15 minutes. Normal time to find the ECU would be three to four minutes. If you notice the red button on the master clutch in the lower right hand corner, that indicates that it has not found that ECU and that something is wrong for it to turn on. When that red clutch turns white, that indicates everything is good to go. Now you notice it says synchronizing ECU. Once it's found everything on the tank, the white master clutch turns on. Now we can proceed to some basic setup functions by touching the wrench in the lower left hand corner. Then we are going to move over to our user and up to our units. Now we want to ensure that we are displaying our units in Imperial if used our pressure in PSI, our area counters on acres, our dry product volume in bushels, our dry product density units in pounds per cubic foot, liquid product units in gallons, application rate, increment type, and fixed rates. Next, we're gonna move, skip a few and move over to our implement then touch the folder tab that says select and we want to ensure that the unit selected indicated by the green check mark is the unit we are actually testing today. In this test we have a 6550 ST with four tanks with metering augers on all four, two fans and it will be coupled up to a 3320 76 foot at 10 inch spacing. Staying on our implement tab, we're going to move over to our geometry tab. The important thing to verify on this screen for testing is that our measurement A, that's the width of our drill, is the match to the unit we've selected. We've selected a 76 foot drill which would be 920 inches. Next we're going to move over to our switch block selection. We have the ability to run our master's switch off of a virtual indicating the touchscreen or a cabin switch box. The units all come equipped with the cabin switch box, a six channel switch box, and we will want to test it with that six channel switch box whether or not the unit is being used with that or not. So we have our master switch, cabin switch, cabin switch box, six channel switch box. On the 6000 series air seeders 
we do not use the calibration switch box on the tank. That function is not available on a 6000 series air seeder. Next we're going to go over to our seeder tab, the granular tank, tanks, we can enable the tanks we're testing. We have tank 1 enabled, tank 2 enabled, we'll test tank 3, and our fourth tank. So we have one, one, two, three, four, all four tanks are enabled. We can skip our grouping, we don't need to group today. Touch our drive setup. If we touch on tank one, we want to ensure that our pulses are set at 16, encoder pulses. Our metering auger matches the auger in the tank. This tank we have for testing has a double flight in tank one and we want to make sure our tank clutch is enabled for all of our four tanks that we're testing. Once that's good, we can proceed to a product tab, expand the granular selection, and for our tests we'd like to enter wheat, hard red, whatever products the customer or if you are the customer whatever products you'll be using that year make sure they're all preset in here. We have 4600 canola wheat hard red in here. We will test with canola and wheat hard red but we will enter some new products show you how it's done. So I touch a new product Borgo to pull from the Borgo list. Now if we touch the yellow indicator We'll enter some 1251, highlight it, the yellow indicator becomes live, press it again. We can change the name at this time if we choose. We can add 2014 if we choose. Touch the yellow indicator, the green check mark indicating we've completed the process. Now we have to enter preset rates. Our product rate increment that indicates the bump up or down rates. Set that up. Twelve fifty one. Rate increment. I uh, will we'll enter. No. I'll enter five pounds. Back up five pounds. Preset rate two. That's a secondary rate. We could enter 60 pounds, whatever you choose to see that. And then the product rate, preset rate one. That would be our primary rate. If we entered 50 pounds. you would proceed with all of your products that you're going to seed with that, that year. Once you've done all of this, we simply touch the running man that will get us back to our running screen, our main operating screen. Now on the right hand side of the screen we have tanks 1, 2, 3 and 4. We have room on this section of the screen to display all four tanks, one, two, three, four. I have moved this over to one, four, two, three. Next we have to put product in all of our tanks that we want to test for the day. We have wheat in our first tank we have a preset rate of 40 pounds for that wheat in that tank. Our tank 4 is empty so we have to expand that tank. In order to expand this tank we have to take other products off the screen to make room to expand it. 
Then we touch on the select product, product name, take our wheat. It has a preset rate of 110 pounds per acre. We're happy with that for test. Ask us if we want to fill the tank. Yes, for today is fine. Now we notice that requested rate is 110 pounds per acre. Our tank two has canola with a requested rate. Our tank three is empty. So we'll remove one of the tanks again, expand our tank three, select product, product name. We can select our 1251. We've entered in there for testing. Fill the tank, yes. Has our preset requested rate up here. All four of our tanks are set up to proceed with a calibration or operational check. To enter our calibration screen, we touch the wrench. For our test procedures, we want to have a manual speed set of close to your seating speed. For our test, we've entered five miles per hour. You touch here to enter your five miles per hour. Five miles per hour, five miles per hour on the speed indicator. If we tested it like this, it's using the GPS speed, which is zero because we're stationary. Manual speed. Now we will proceed over to our multi-tank calibration. Automatic tank calibration. Press the yellow arrow to proceed. The tank clutches we choose to test. As indicated with the six channel switch box. Tank one, tank two, tank three, tank four. Our master clutch On the 6000 series air seeder, we have a remote clutch switch box. This is breaking the power link to the electronic clutches. All of our tanks we wish to test at this time have to have the clutches on. On our sample tank today, we do have product in tanks one and two. So we will leave those off and just verify that our tanks three and four will turn. We have our, turn these off, our master is on. Our calibration motor will turn the metering system If you notice on our monitor, tanks three and four are accumulating RPM as well as estimated weight based on the application rate achieved. We would proceed to verify that all four metering augers are turning and the actuators are moving in accordance change the rate. Turned our clutches off. Now we have to proceed back to the cab to verify that it will get rid of the accumulated revs and the estimated weight. Basically reset this. Have to turn the master switch off. That enables us to proceed with the calibration entering the weights or to reject those RPMs. So if we press this button or one of these buttons, I will press three, reset it back to zero. Now I'll test the function of this reset button that would reset them all at the same time. Now we're reset back to zero, turn the clutches off, and we will exit our calibration.
Okay, we have the ability to customize our display. On our display we have tank 4, 1, 3 and 2. We can move them around how we would like. We can also customize the display down below. If I touch on the dashboard, now we have selected fan speed. Our tank 1, tank 2, we'll select tank 3 and we've got speed on the dashboard. We can expand each of these fields on our fans. We're displaying fans 1 and 2 which is good. If we move over to tank 1 brings up another field. We have application rate and metering auger roller RPM. Cal factor is another one I like to display to verify it has a calibration factor. So we would proceed to set all of our tanks up accordingly and then the check mark. We also want to make sure our fans are displaying properly on the X30. Okay, in order to calibrate a 6000 series air seeder, we have to divert oil from the fan circuits over to our metering circuits via hydraulic motor that will run the metering drive to turn the auger so we can put product into our buckets to calibrate. So we have the fan circuit bypassed, sending oil to our metering circuit, and we have a valve to turn the auger or motor on or off. We have a needle valve here that we can adjust the speed of the motor to match the ground speed of the seeder. This adjustment is best done with a friend in the cab indicating faster or slower. So we simply can loosen the jam nut, engage the motor with the tank clutches off, and our friend will tell us faster or slower. As we adjust it, we can hear the speed of the motor change. Make slow adjustments. Once you have the adjustment done, now our metering circuit is going to turn at approximately the speed the customer puts his product down with. There may be various options you want to test with your 6000 series air seeder that we have not done today and all of those resources we've added procedures in our operator's manual as well as on the website in our service and warranty, our service and parts section of the website under frequently asked questions and monitor questions. So you want to verify if you do have NH3 or liquid that you do the test to check that everything is operating properly. We have tests on the website to do these tests without actually being hooked up to the tank. If you do have blockage modules, these tests need to be done after the drill is coupled to the tank. This should be done in the field to verify that the blockage monitors are in the right locations and they do function as designed. The load unload auger functions should be tested in an open area to ensure that all of the hydraulic levers work as designed and operator gets a little more familiarity with those functions. Last and one of the most important things is to ensure that you have a GPS signal coming from your tractor into the X30. We need a very accurate speed source and GPS is your best speed source. On our website under the frequently asked questions we have all the procedures that you will need to get signal out of your tractor receiver and import it into the X30 with simple PowerPoints indicating the parts you'll need to purchase from the tractor manufacturer dealer and some of the settings you need to do with their monitor to get GPS speed in. The reason we like to use GPS speed is it's the most accurate speed source with the larger tires and as the tank empties out the diameter of the tire will change changing the speed of the implement. If 
Other references are needed. The operator's manual and the website are great references to use for future reference.